Welcome to the solutions to the Regents Physics Circular Motion and Gravity Problem Set, problems number 13 and 14. Problem 13, the gravitational force between two electrons one meter apart is 5.42 times 10 to the negative 71 newtons. Find the mass of an electron. We're going to start with Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation equation, Fg equals big G, mass of one electron times the mass of the other electron divided by the distance between the electrons squared. When we go to substitute here, we have the force between them, very small, 5.42 times 10 to the negative 71 newtons, equals Newton's universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared, times, and the key to this problem is that, of course, two electrons would be identical, so they have identical mass, and the mass of one electron times the mass of the other electron would be mass of electron squared. This allows us to easily solve the problem. Divided by the distance between their centers, which is one meter squared, and so when we go ahead and solve this problem, you're going to take the force, and since 1 squared is 1, it's a wash, so you're going to take the force and divide by the gravitational constant, and then you'll take the square root of that answer, and when you do that, you should get the mass of the electron to be 9.01 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. I would encourage you to Compare that to the value you see on the reference table. You'll find that it's close, but not exact. And of course, that's due to sig figging here with the force measurement, the distance measurement, and the actual value of the gravitational constant itself being the three digits, uh, which is, of course, a sig fig value as well. So it's not a perfect answer, but it's pretty darn close. All right, number 14. The distance between the Earth and the Moon, mass of the Moon and mass of the, mass of the Earth and mass of the Moon are all given on the New York State reference table. The mass of the Sun is 2 times 10 to the 3rd kilograms, and the distance between the Moon and the Sun is 1.50 times 10 to the 11th meters. Find the ratio of the gravitational force exerted by the Sun on the Moon to the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the Moon. To do this, we first have to calculate the gravitational force of attraction between the Sun and the Moon. This, of course, would be big G, mass of Sun, mass of Moon, divided by the distance between them squared. And we go ahead and substitute values that we were given here. Mass of the Sun, 2 times 10 to the 30th. Mass of the Moon off the reference table, 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. And the distance between them given in this problem 1.50 times 10 to the 11th. Don't forget to square it. When we get that calculation done, we should find to three digits a value that's 4.36 times 10 to the 20th newtons. We now have to calculate the force of gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Moon. Of course, to do that, similar calculation, but with different values. Big G, mass of the Earth, mass of the Moon, divided by the distance between the Moon and the Earth squared. We go ahead and substitute. We find the mass of the Earth to be 5.98 times 20, 20, uh, 10 to the 24th kilograms. Mass of the Moon already given, 7.35 times 10 to the 22. Divide by the distance between them, 3.84 times 10 to the 8th. Again, don't forget to square. Go ahead and perform the calculation. You should find that the gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Moon is 1.99 times 10 to the 20th newtons. They want the ratio between the two. So the ratio between the two, and they want the ratio of the force between the Sun and the Moon and the Earth and the Moon. So we put the Sun and the Moon in the numerator, 4.36 times 10 to the 20th newtons, calculated earlier. We put the Earth's attraction force, 1.99 times 10 to the 20th newtons. The times 20, 10 to the 20th cancels, as do the units for newtons. So our ratio comes down to 4.36 divided by 1.99. And 
and we get a ratio of 2.19. Now, note that this ratio is in favor of the sun. So I'm going to ask you, and if you don't know the answer, ask in class tomorrow, if the sun pulls harder on the moon than the earth pulls on the moon, then why doesn't the moon revolve around the sun instead of revolving around the earth? Ponder that for a little bit. That'll do it for our solutions to numbers. Uh, what we got here? 13 and 14. More to come in class tomorrow as we'll tackle number 15.